Welcome, Adam's children. Today is a great day because I have received the latest maps and reports from the cartographer who has been busy at work. Previously, we braved the gunners and their bases, but this is the first time that we have gathered intel on one of the Commonwealth factions. While the cartographer was recovering from his journeys, I took the liberty to do a little upgrade, and now he is at least 100% more pious than before. Go ahead, show him. Glory to Atom. Glory to Atom indeed, brother. Now on to the maps of the Minutemen. Glory to Atom. Yes. So, let's take a look at the Minute. Glory to Atom. Let's get to look. Glory. Are you going to do that every time? <clears throat> As I was saying, let's look at the once powerful Minutemen, recently brought low but with some luck, can turn things around and transform the Commonwealth. Crank up the rads and utter a glory to Adam as we check Adam. out the Minutemen cartography. All right, how do I undo an update? Usually the first map that I show is the current state of the group of interest. In this case, the Minutemen, but as of the beginning of the game in 2287, well, the Minutemen map looks like this. Yeah, nothing. They have no real holdings and only get this honorary circle because the last Minutemen in the Commonwealth are holed up in Concord, fighting a bunch of raiders for their lives. However, the Minutemen are different from any other group in the game. Their organization is intrinsically tied to settlements and settlers. Without the cooperation of settlements and a goal of common defense against raiders, super mutants, gunners, and other groups that will bend settlers to their will, they are nothing. So we will be looking at a lot of settlements and focusing in particular on the settlements that ally themselves with the Minutemen. So in that light, let's take a look at the state of settlements at the beginning of the game in 2287. I had to make a working definition for what is a settlement and what is not. Although it seems pretty easy to simply define what a settlement is, there are enough edge cases to make things a little messy. I defined a settlement as a location with two or more individuals, with a workbench, and the potential for expansion and self-sustainability. An exception is made for the largest settlements that don't have a workbench. I think it's pretty obvious that a place like Good Neighbor is indeed a settlement, although we can't access a workbench there. It is interesting to note that there is an entire western portion of the map that is completely devoid of settlements. The empty southwest corner makes sense because that is the glowing sea, and no one but Adam's holy people can survive down there. But there is a whole stretch of land without any settlements. South of Boston also has a large area devoid of any settlements, although we will see soon that that was not always the case. Next, I want to look at the population distribution with this map here. I counted the number of NPCs in a given location, but your numbers may vary a bit game to game, so don't think that these numbers are absolute. Rather than focusing on the exact number of people in a given location, we should look at how they compare relative to each other. As expected, downtown Boston has the most populated settlements, with the settlements of Bunker Hill, Good Neighbor, Diamond City, and Vault 81, yes, I am classifying Vault 81 as a settlement, containing more people than the rest of the wasteland settlements combined. Downtown Boston with the major settlements have three times more people than all of the outside settlements. It's not really a surprise though that there are more people living in the four large settlements than the rest of the Commonwealth, but having three times the population I think speaks to just how dangerous it is to try and eke out a living away from entrenched and defended large settlements. Now for a rather interesting map that marks all the settlements that are known to have been destroyed, wiped out, or otherwise repopulated sometime before 2287. The lost settlements seem concentrated in the southeast or the northeast, and if we look at where settlements are found in 2287, we see that some of those holes that we spoke of earlier are filled in pretty well by these lost settlements, particularly in the south. 
Notably, the western portion doesn't have any settlements when the game takes place, and it doesn't seem like there existed any settlements in the past that have been destroyed. What I do find interesting though is looking at this overlay for the enemy level map for the game, most of the settlements that have been destroyed are in the areas where we find higher level enemies. This actually conforms quite well with really only one exception and shows that the average settler just can't withstand the particularly dangerous areas of the commonwealth. Some of these settlements failed for similar reasons, while others were specifically targeted by outside forces, and some of these failed settlements play a key role in the history of the Minutemen. Let's start with a little outlier here. Taffington Boathouse, which is not far from the Super Mutants and Raiders at Malden to the north. We know that similar to other small settlements in this area, that it was inhabited by a family of three. The Sutton family had been living at this settlement not that long ago, growing gourds and raising two Brahmin that are found slain. Other than a number of traps that can be found, the settlement is not that remarkable, except for the very high number of blood bugs that can be found there. The blood bugs appear to be responsible for the death of the Brahmin, as well as Mary Sutton, whose lifeless body is found at the boathouse. Just north of the boathouse is Margaret Sutton's body, found in a drainage ditch that once again is infested with blood bugs. She is found here because she has been looking for Russell Sutton, who had gone into the drainage looking for a supposed chem stash. Indeed, Russell's body is found inside the drainage, he too having been killed by a bunch of blood bugs. But hey, he found the chems. It seems the search for the stash stirred up a group of blood bugs living in the drainage that killed Russell, also killed Margaret when she got worried about Russell and went looking for him, and then they started to spread as far out as the boathouse where they attacked and killed Mary and the Brahmin. North of the boathouse is Outpost Zamonja, a settlement that is centered around an old radio broadcast tower. Not much is known of the original settlers, other than that this settlement is rather well developed, but they have since been killed or driven off by the raiders, led by their power armored leader, Boomer. Boomer is actually relatively well known amongst the raiders of the commonwealth as his name can be heard spoken of sometimes, but his ultimate goals are unknown other than just living the raider life. Breakheart Banks is just north and east of the boathouse and the settlers here also appear to have been killed not long ago. Two bodies are found in the bathroom of this small settlement where they had been growing a decent amount of corn. It has since been taken over by super mutants, and several muties can be found here along with their hounds. Not far to the north, across the water is Lynn Woods, a rather large settlement near a large stone tower. It isn't clear what the settlers did here, if this was a farm, a trading hub, or what, because it's since been ransacked and occupied by raiders. A bonfire burning a bunch of items is found in the middle, and no sign of settlers can be found so it's not entirely clear how long ago this was a functioning settlement. But the Vault Dweller Survival Guide states that the raiders had recently taken the settlement, which may explain why they are so underprepared for the death claws that come and attack the settlement if the breaker at the top of the tower is thrown and sounds an alarm. East of Lynn Woods is the old town of Salem, Massachusetts, which is home to a bunch of mire lurks and an old salty man who has dedicated his life to killing all the Mirelurks. Barney Rook is his name, and he is the only known survivor of the once bustling settlement of Salem. Only a few years ago, Salem was a very prosperous town, and the abandoned storefronts in the middle of the city shows that they were much larger than any other settlement that can or could be found in this part of the commonwealth. However, they did not adequately prepare their defenses even though Barney Rook himself insisted that he better train their local militia. Like an Egyptian plague, Mirelurks emerged from the sea and overran the town, killing and driving off everyone but Barney in the process. I find it interesting that Barney mentions the Salem militia, and it leaves us to wonder if this militia was one of the many that made up the Minutemen. Much farther south, just outside the city, is the old area of Fairline Hill Estates that once again used to be a settlement. The fate of this settlement is kind of mysterious, but it happened so recently and so suddenly 
that many companions will comment when moving through the area, saying that the last time they were here, there were a bunch of people. All that is left are some dead Brahmin that are being munched on by two Yao Guai, although we're not sure if the Yao Guai are the ones that killed the Brahmin. We see a bunch of empty crafting stations, and one of the houses has something rather puzzling. It is chained closed, and if you work your way up some debris through a hole in the wall on the upper floor, we find an old skeleton and a locked room that is full of feral ghouls. We are left to wonder if the ghouls were somehow lured into this room and trapped inside the house, which would justify the fortified entrances, or whether these ghouls are some of the settlers that locked themselves away from danger and inadvertently ghoulified themselves and got stuck in this fortified home. Regardless, this is a decent sized settlement that was completely wiped off the map only recently. Just east on the coast was once the bustling settlement of University Point. This may be the largest of all the destroyed settlements, but rather than being the unfortunate recipients of random wasteland violence, they met their demise at the hands of the Institute. This was a very successful settlement. You can still see storefronts, several crafting stations, signs that welcome traders, and a large pen for Brahmin. But the only things left are synths that are still combing over the ruins. This all started when a young woman named Jacqueline Spencer found pre-war research about nuclear reactor efficiency, and the Institute found out through their intelligence network. The Institute showed up in force, and when the settlement refused to cooperate, they responded with violence, and it does not appear as if anyone was spared. According to the companion Deacon, University Point may have also been called Mass State, or maybe this Mass State was a larger group of settlements that included University Point, and it was at one point in time key to winning an old battle called the Battle of Charles River. Since Dean is the source of this information, and we never see the name Mass State anywhere else, this information is questionable. University Point seemed to trade quite a bit in razor grain, which can still be found at the settlement ruins, and this place was destroyed sometime at the end of 2285. The only island settlement in the entire Commonwealth is Spectacle Island, that also covers the largest area of any settlement. We don't know when it was first settled, but the settlers used a number of buildings and rotting ships, rigging up a one-of-a-kind system that can repel Meyer Lurks. This speaker system broadcasts a certain frequency that drives off Meyer Lurks and allowed the settlers to have full control of the island. They planted a variety of crops and exploited all the wreckage found on the island, at least for a time. At some point, the Meyer Lurk repelling system went offline and the Meyer Lurks streamed back in, killing everyone that once called the island their home. This all seems to have happened recently. Six settlers can be found dead, but how did their system fail? The sole survivor can get the system back up and running with a little effort, so it didn't just break down. Well, amongst the dead is the body of a raider, not far from several dead settlers. It would seem that a raider group attacked the settlement and in the process knocked out the anti Meyerlurk system, and amongst all the confusion, the Meyerlurks descended. That leaves us with only two other settlements, both of which are very important to the story of the Minutemen. The castle was once the headquarters of the Minutemen at the height of their influence in the Commonwealth. It was here that they tried to forge a new government, the Commonwealth Provincial Government, until those efforts were halted by the Institute, who sent a synth to massacre all the leaders who were trying to hash out a deal. This prevented a unified government from being formed under the influence of the Minutemen, sometime between 2229 and 2240. This seems to be the first big blow to the Minutemen, and the worst was yet to come. In 2240, so almost 50 years before the game starts, the Minutemen would lose their headquarters, the castle, to a Meyerlurk queen and an army of Meyerlurks that rose out of the water destroyed one of the walls, caved in other parts of the castle, killed many of the Minutemen leaders, and scattered the survivors. The castle would go on to remain uninhabited by all but the Meyerlurks, 
and this would be an unrecoverable blow to the Minutemen that would cause them to decline in power and influence through the years. The last destroyed settlement that sets the stage for the state of the Minutemen in 2287 is Quincy, south of Boston. This once bustling community still has all the markings of a large successful settlement and appears to have been the biggest in the region with many stores, trading stalls, and crafting stations. Not long before the Soul Icicle thawed themselves out, the large mercenary group, the Gunners, mounted an attack against the settlement. Quincy called for aid, and only a small group of Minutemen answered the call. It wasn't enough to beat back the Gunners, and things ground down to a stalemate. Neither side was able to make progress, with no other Minutemen coming to help the defenders. After a Minutemen leader, Clint defected and took advantage of the elevated highway, the defenders could no longer hold their positions, and they began to scatter. Some were captured, and a small group escaped and headed north, losing men along the way as they were pursued. This would be known as the Quincy Massacre, and is one of the most recent events to happen, with that small band of survivors ending up in Concord. They were Preston Garvey and company, and they would have met their demise at the hands of the raiders if the sole survivor didn't come and save them. Quincy would be the near fatal blow to the Minutemen, a once large organization that spanned the Commonwealth, defended Diamond City from a super mutant attack, and nobly tried to unify the Commonwealth, but suffered blow after blow until they were just a memory and one super annoying quest giver. We don't know for sure how many of the destroyed settlements were actually allied with the Minutemen with the exception of the Castle and Quincy, although there is a pretty good chance that they were or had been allied with the Minutemen at one point. So back to this riveting map that shows the only location where Minutemen can be found at the start of the game in 2287. Should the sole survivor decide to save and aid the Minutemen, it starts a chain of rebuilding. The first order of business is to find a place for the survivors to settle, which is always at Sanctuary. There is absolutely no rest for the weary though, since Preston Garvey will immediately task the sole survivor with rebuilding the Minutemen by helping surrounding settlements and having them thereby join or rejoin the near extinct group. Alternatively, there are sites where there are no settlers that scouts have determined to be a good spot for a settlement to be established. Here are all the locations that can be cleared of hostels and claimed for the Minutemen marked in yellow. Going through these sites, Sanctuary is often the first because Garvey et al. want to set up shop here, but the Red Rocket Station just south of Sanctuary can also be a settlement and is a place that does not appear to previously have been a settlement, although there are crafting stations, so this may have been a small refuge for a few people. Farther south of the Red Rocket Station is the Sunshine Tidings Co-op, which has signs of being a settlement long ago, as there are some wild versions of tato plants and plenty of crafting stations. Professor Goodfields is a vestige of the pre-war group that lived here and liberated him from a nearby robotics store and seems to have inflicted a short or two. If people did live in the settlement post-war, they have not been here for a while since there is no evidence of recent habitation. East of the co-op is another claimable settlement, the Starlight Drive-In, which does not appear to have been a settlement, but was at one time used by someone, or maybe a couple individuals, as a home, as it is littered with traps and some old beds. Outpost Zamonja to the north that was recently lost to the raiders can be reclaimed from them, and in the process, the notorious raider leader Boomer can be put down into the ground. The Taffington Boathouse that we spoke of earlier as well, that has become an awful blood bug infestation, is one of the few settlements that has been recently destroyed but can be reclaimed. Far east, there are three settlements that can be claimed for the Minutemen. One is a small house and garage inhabited by raiders and some mire lurks known as Coastal Cottage without really much more to this location. Seriously, this place kind of sucks. The Kingsport Lighthouse is a unique location that is currently occupied by Children of Adam, and one must kill all the Children of Adam 
<laughs> to claim it for the Minutemen. The lighthouse is used as a beacon to lead other children of Adam to the crater just to the north that has the irradiated wreckage of an airplane. And they power this beacon with green energy. Literally, it's a glowing ghoul that's just chilling at the top being used as the beacon. South of the Kingsport Lighthouse is an old mansion known as the Krupp Manor that is absolutely infested with ghouls. They are not here because the area is super irradiated. They have been attracted to this location because the family that used to live here, the Krupps, ghoulified after the Great War, and all but one of them went feral. Theodore Krupp, the only one to retain his mental faculties, kept his family sequestered away in the basement where he hoped he could protect them and teach them how to act human again. Theodore has the patience of a saint since he did this for almost two centuries until he finally snapped and killed his feral aunt after she refused to listen to his commands. I mean, can you blame him? The ferals turned on him and killed him, and his body can be found in the basement to this day. One settlement run by raiders is known as Hangman's Alley, and for some reason is another place that the Minutemen figure would make a good settlement, although there isn't much space to build or farm, but I guess it is kind of close to Diamond City. Spectacle Island can be reclaimed by reactivating the anti-Mirelurk system, and someone should really copy that technology and bring it to the castle or to Salem, which are both overrun with Mirelurks. A location south of Boston called Jamaica Plains is drowning in feral ghouls who attack any would-be treasure hunters who try and claim the treasure of Jamaica Plains that is rumored to be held there. But clearing the ghouls will allow for this area to be settled. Lastly, a swampy pre-war construction site, known as the Murk Water Construction Site, can be claimed by killing a Mirelurk Queen, but this spot is just super swampy, with little to no scrap and a smack dab in between the Gunners headquarters and the Gunners in Quincy, where there's still a bunch of bloodthirsty Gunners, so this location is pretty suspect. It is worth noting that six former settlements cannot be resettled. Lynn Woods, Raycart Banks, Salem, University Point, Fairline Hill Estates, and Quincy. And there is never a good reason given as to why. Perhaps these places are just deemed too dangerous for long-term settlement, but really your guess is as good as mine. So with all these possibilities, the Minutemen start to expand by claiming areas and turning them into settlements, or by aiding existing settlements and allying with the settlers. At least four settlements in addition to Sanctuary need to be allied with the Minutemen during the First Steps quest before the Minutemen are strong enough for their next big plan. The settlements can be any of the existing ones or claimable ones that we have just gone over. There is no set pattern for Minutemen expansion either. So this here is just a representation of what the minimum Minutemen holdings would be to advance the Minutemen quests. After claiming four settlements, the Minutemen can finally reclaim the one settlement that I purposefully omitted earlier, the castle. The quest called Taking Independence has the sole survivor, aka Preston's bitch, along with a group of Minutemen travel to the castle and destroy all the Mirelurk egg clutches and fight and kill the Mirelurk queen that had destroyed the castle almost 50 years ago. The castle has been reclaimed. After the successful recapture, the Minutemen can reclaim the weapons and supplies that were sealed off in the armory, but the Minutemen need to gather a bit more strength before they can take on any of the other factions in the Commonwealth. The Minutemen will never confront the Railroad, and the player can decide whether to fight the Brotherhood of Steel or leave them be, but the Institute is always a threat that must be dealt with. In order to build the army needed for such a war with the Boogeyman of the Commonwealth, they establish a new radio signal, known as Radio Freedom, and the sole survivor will continue to claim settlements. Four more settlements must be claimed at a minimum, and again, there is no rhyme or reason for which settlements are settled first, but here is just an example of what the minimum growth would look like. It is at this point that the Minutemen are sufficiently large to take the fight to the Institute. The Institute will catch wind of the Minutemen's plans and attack the castle, which must be successfully repelled in order to invade the Institute. 
Infiltrating through a mostly forgotten entrance through an old water cooling system, the sole survivor and an infiltration team fight their way to the Institute's relay where they can beam in reinforcements and detonate the Institute's new nuclear reactor. There is an option to sound the evacuation alarm, which I think is in line with the principles of the Minutemen, and if the Minutemen quests are what Bethesda intends for the canonical ending of Fallout 4, this will likely be a canon event. The Institute is destroyed, and the story of Fallout 4 is largely over. But if there are any unsettled areas or settlements that are not allied with the Minutemen, quests will continue to be given until every single one of these areas are part of the Minutemen. This is their manifest destiny. Interestingly, should the evacuation alarm be thrown during the invasion of the Institute, there is a chance to see a group of Institute refugees asking for help finding a new place to settle, and the sole survivor has to travel to an unclaimed settlement and clear it of hostels for the refugees. Finally, this is the extent of the Minutemen growth once every possible settlement has allied with the Minutemen, with the exception of the settlement at the Boston airport, since that is under Brotherhood control. It is hard to say what may be canon in regards to the Brotherhood and Minutemen relationship, but Preston does express that he thinks a confrontation with the Brotherhood is inevitable, so maybe that is foreshadowing. Should the Brotherhood's presence in the Commonwealth be destroyed, that would add one more settlement that can be claimed for the Minutemen cause. Notably, three of the four largest settlements in downtown Boston area are not shown here on the map because, well, we don't actually know what their relationship would be like with the Minutemen. Vault 81, Diamond City, and Good Neighbor are all sufficiently large enough to not rely on a mutual defense network of settlements to ensure their own safety. However, if the Minutemen effectively control all of these areas and show that they are a force to be reckoned with by taking out the Institute and potentially the Brotherhood of Steel, maybe the large settlements would have no choice but to ally themselves in some shape or form. Bunker Hill is different though because it has a workshop that can be claimed by the sole survivor and therefore I think can be considered within the constellation of settlements that collectively make up the Minutemen. This is achieved by helping out this trading hub by killing the raider boss known as Judge Zeller, who was being paid off by Bunker Hill to leave their traders alone, but he decided that was boring and started to take hostages again. After killing Judge Zeller as a token of thanks, the sole survivor will then be given access to the settlement's workshop and will even get a cut of the earnings as a thank you. This is the biggest settlement that will overtly join the Minutemen cause and its importance in local trade would make it vital to the continued prosperity of the Commonwealth. Every settlement that the player has control over has a default settler limit of 10 people. So the population of these settlements will grow up to 10 people, but that limit can be raised depending on the charisma level of the sole survivor. Since the sole survivor's charisma will vary playthrough to playthrough, if we just assume a maximum settler limit of 10 people in each claimed settlement, we see a huge growth outside of the main settlements of Diamond City and Good Neighbor. Before, I counted 168 individuals in the four major settlements, Fault 81, Diamond City, Good Neighbor, and Bunker Hill, and only 51 in the settlements outside of these main population centers. After claiming all the settlements for the Minutemen, and growing them to the minimum of a 10 person limit, which again is the absolute minimum, this shifts the population dramatically. Now the settlements will have a combined population of 270 people, much larger than the 168 that once made up the bulk of the Commonwealth's population in the big locations. This is a drastic change in the population and I think goes to show that the Commonwealth is so unstable and so unsafe that as soon as any level of safety and security can be established, people will coalesce. Drifters and travelers will finally try and establish themselves in the Commonwealth 
rather than moving out to greener pastures outside of the Commonwealth or just bouncing from location to location. This appears to be an entirely new beginning for the Commonwealth, with the Institute destroyed and the source of the super mutants destroyed along with it, all of these settlements under the same banner. In addition to all these settlements, there are several checkpoints which will be manned by Minutemen guards. Some of these are old US military checkpoints, and others are just areas where like a vertebrate crashed into the ground or something. I don't know why they chose a place like that, I didn't send them there. The Minutemen will man all these locations and defend them, and sometimes a quest will be given to the player if you approach a checkpoint, where you must help the guards defend the checkpoint from any number of enemies. It's interesting to note that these checkpoints kind of tend to cluster rather than being more evenly distributed across the commonwealth. But occupying these checkpoints just adds to the security of the settlements, and that cluster out west could be the first step to actually establishing settlements out there. With all the settlements under their control, there are a few worth mentioning because they offer unique advantages to the Minutemen, or they stand out in some other way. The castle is obvious, it is a heavily fortified position that they can use as headquarters to lead the Minutemen, and if they want, try again to forge a government for the entire commonwealth. The castle will continue to be a key location for the Minutemen in the years to come. Spectacle Island is a very large area that could be used for a lot of farming, and could be the first step towards a Minutemen navy since the large settlement on the island would necessitate a dedicated system of transportation to and from the island. The Slog is one of the larger settlements with around 8 people and is unique for a few reasons. It is inhabited solely by ghouls who left Diamond City after the anti-ghoul sentiment reached fever pitch and they were kicked out. This is one of the only places in the commonwealth that grows tar berries and would therefore have a monopoly on tar berry trade and production. The Green Top Nursery and Grey Gardens are both settlements with large greenhouses that have a serious potential to grow a lot of crops, especially Grey Garden because it is managed by a number of Mr. Handy robots that have one directive, and that is to spread the crap and maximize production. Egret Tours Marina could offer a base of operations for any travel on the Charles River that can go south into unknown territory or north into downtown Boston, which could be useful for trade or for defense. The Starlight Drive-In, Abernathy Farm, and Sanctuary all have the potential to become large settlements, which would make even more sense because this area of the Commonwealth typically has fewer high-level threats like Deathclaws, Mirelurk Queens, and the like. The Minutemen could easily become the dominant force in this part of the wasteland because of the density of large settlements and fewer threats than other areas like South Boston. Now there are two settlements that could be rather interesting for the Minutemen. The first is Bunker Hill, which is a very important trading hub, and the fact that the Minutemen can have a direct relationship with the settlement could lead to interesting outcomes. I could almost see Bunker Hill and the big traders growing in strength under the protection of the Minutemen and increased security and protection that they provide in the Commonwealth, to the point that it could evolve into something like the Crimson Caravan out west. This could provide very interesting friction between a growing merchant class and the rather pure intentions of the Minutemen. Covenant is a standout settlement because of the perfect pre-war aesthetic that can't be found anywhere else in the dilapidated and decaying commonwealth. Covenant can become a settlement either by allying with the original settlers, allowing them to continue their clandestine synth detection research, or by wiping them all out and claiming the settlement for your own. I think the most interesting scenario would be if the settlement allied themselves with the Minutemen, because I do not think that alliance would be able to last for very long. Their practice of randomly imprisoning suspected synths and holding them against their will, often resulting in their death with no real results to show for their operation, would no doubt cause them to come into conflict with the Minutemen and their primary mission of mutual defense against all threats. So I think it is likely that Covenant will end up in conflict with the Minutemen at some point and end up being repopulated since the entire original population is complicit in their operation and willing to hide it to the point of violence. It is a shame that Quincy cannot be reclaimed for the Minutemen. 
either as a mission for them or as a companion quest for Preston Garvey. And indeed, there are several large settlements that are not reclaimed in the game that could be useful. Quincy, University Point, Salem, and Lynn Woods are large settlements that could provide great places for re-establishing settlements. Heck, take the Mirelurk repelling technology from Spectacle Island, set one up at the castle so that a Mirelurk attack won't ever happen again, and go north with it as well, driving the Mirelurks out of Salem once and for all. So what is the future of the Minutemen? I think that controlling all the existing small settlements, creating new settlements in promising locations around the Commonwealth, and even reclaiming some previously lost settlements puts the Minutemen at the strongest position they have ever been in. Even if we assume that the Minutemen of old held as much land and influence as they do at the end of Fallout 4, there are three important things that I think put them in a better position. The first is that super mutants are no longer being created. That threat will diminish through time as super mutants die or leave the commonwealth, meaning that the Minutemen will have one fewer threat to worry about. The second important point is that the only main factions that can oppose them, the Institute and the Brotherhood of Steel, are taken out or no longer a threat. The Institute constantly destabilized the Commonwealth and even purposefully destroyed the only chance the Commonwealth had at a unified government. This danger that lurked in the shadow, replaced people, raised settlements, and instigated widespread paranoia and distrust is no longer there to do so. The last and most important of all the differences is that all these settlements have a single leader that they have all interacted with on a personal level, the sole survivor. With every single settlement having personal experience with the sole survivor, helping defend their settlements, destroy those that threaten their settlements, set up caravans to distribute resources, and grow and expand their settlements, they will have a leader that commands a unified respect that is completely unprecedented. If there are any future conflicts as a result of leadership, it won't be because of the sole survivor, but rather a dispute that would arise after the sole survivor dies or retires from leadership. For those reasons, I believe the Minutemen are the strongest they have ever been and would reshape the Commonwealth as never before. Given their increased strength, and the large casualties taken by the Gunners at the end of Fallout 4, the Minutemen could once and for all end the Gunner threat. If you don't know what I mean about the massive Gunner casualties, go watch my Gunner cartography video and see what I mean. Lastly, moving into the large western portion of the Commonwealth that is devoid of any settlements would be a logical choice in cleaning up the few raider groups and super mutants that occupy the old dwellings should be quite simple for the seasoned and stronger than ever Minutemen forces. And that is the full cartographic analysis of the Minutemen and the key settlements in Fallout 4. Expect upcoming videos looking at the other main factions and one about the creatures before I move on to either Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3. If you enjoy this different perspective, let me know in the comments and of course, I am interested in any comments and feedback. If you want to go above and beyond, join my congregation of patrons, who you can see here, and we can play some Fallout 76 and attend some church services at the First Church of Adam. Thanks to my patrons, and thanks to you for making it this far, and thanks to the cartographer for his work. Glory. Uh, don't you have some mapping to do? I liked him more when he was a silent cartographer. Adam bless you all. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next week.